Hello and welcome to another episode of the SciShow Talk Show, where today we are joined by my friend Peter Winkler, who is also the guy in charge of graphics for SciShow. Hello. So thank him for all of the pretty graphics. Graphics, go! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> so um, in the news, we've, we've, so we have heard about like uh, sinkholes happening. Sinkholes, yes. Uh, there's another story about a sinkhole. What had happened is that there was a, a major sinkhole going on in, a, in the bayou area. First, I guess I should ask, like, do you know what, this is like a two-parter, mm -hmm. what causes uh, sinkholes? I have a fairly good idea because I grew up in Florida and so I would experience them every once in a while. There was a, when I was a kid, I was like eight or nine, there was a Porsche dealership that got eaten by a sinkhole and they lost like six Porsches. Wow. It's terrible for them. Yeah. I don't really care that much. Mm. So Florida's limestone, which is, I think limestone is like the old, um, like, there's the shells of like tiny sea creatures and uh, they go down and they compress into, into uh, stone. And then uh, that can wear away due to water flowing underground. And as that, that wearing away happens, it can actually like form big pockets underground and then it can get so big that they reach the surface of the ground and then all of the land falls into the pocket. Right. I was right on all that? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Now, <laughs> so, that's, so that is one way for a sinkhole to occur. Okay. Uh, do you know what the second way for a sinkhole is to occur? That was the only way I knew about. Uh, right now, there's like a lot of, uh, a lot of drilling, um, you know, mm -hmm. natural gas drilling. Mm -hmm. um, another way for it to happen is uh, for like, uh, like a salt cavern or salt mines. And what happens is that um, from all the natural gas drilling and everything, um, those will just give away underneath uh, from just too much drilling. So that like the pressure like of stuff being taken out of the ground, the pressure that was once there holding that stuff up right. isn't there anymore and that will collapse? Right. Okay. So um, in the case of um, like here in this Louisiana, Louisiana case, they actually had um, what's called, uh, it actually did its own natural frack out. Mm -hmm. All this brine kind of just busted through these caverns and just um, just started taking away this, this whole area. And now they're saying that they're kind of concerned that the, uh, the, the majority of Louisiana actually <laughs> is, is, could suffer from this and that there, it, it could possibly just be one gigantic sinkhole. To all of you in New Orleans, I love your city and your food. And your food. And I love you, but I'm not convinced that in a hundred years it will still be there. Yeah. It's sad. It's too much. And your music. I also love your music. Now there's a news. Is there news now? Yes. News. Okay. Go. And graphics. News. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, uh, DARPA um, mm -hmm. came out with this uh, robotic mule. Yes. That can help out with... Uh, it's like a pack animal, but it's made of electricity and yeah. metal. Mm -hmm. And it has no soul. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, do, do mules have souls? You know, I'm not going to get into that debate. Whether Comments. Or not. <laughs> Down do, do mules have souls? <laughs> well, with this right now, um, they're they're hoping to get this this uh, this robotic pack mule uh, done by 2014 to hand off to the Marines, so that um, they can have. Yeah, so it can go about uh, about 29, 30 miles um, on a on a uh, charge, yeah, on a charge without. So having it's electric. To go into it's not like two-stroke engine or something. Yeah, I think so. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's battery operated. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can see some of the videos too, where they've. I've seen them like kick it on the side. I have and, seen that. And they kind of balance. And it's it like, ah, oh, no, no big. Kick yeah. me all you want, yeah. like a real mule. Yeah. Not don't kick mules. But the real thing is, is that after they get done with this, um, this is sort of a a way for them to test out how their the robotics work. Because uh, DARPA has been talking about how they want, by 2020, to have what they call killer robots. No, really? Did they call it that? Well, I mean, that's what everyone's calling it. I mean, I would, I would everyone's feel like, calling I it that. I would feel like DARPA would be intelligent enough to not name a project the killer robot well, project. It's, it's, but you uh, never know. I don't think it's actually called the killer robot. Okay. But um, they, they are actual, like, humanoid-type robots. With lethal force. Yeah, that's their plan. That's, the, that's their plan, is to go out and, um, 
into Why do SciShow this. talk shows lately seem to be terrifying? Oh. Is this, has anyone else noticed this trend? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's good television. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought we were going to get robots and they were going to, like, make our beds and stuff. Yeah. Do the laundry. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, like, pack orders at the DFTBA warehouse mm -hmm. so we wouldn't have to do that. Maybe. But now it's like, no, we're instead going to use them to kill each other. Before we get the robots to help us make our beds, we got to make sure they can kill people first, obviously. That... We, we train them in the military. I look at pilots. You know, pilots are trained in the military first before mm -hmm. they go and you know start flying around commercial jets. Robots have to start in the military. <laughs> they have to start everybody, in the military. That's everybody. Yeah. I can imagine a robot sergeant telling another robot, robot private like <laughs> I'll have you folding sheets in no time. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in the hotel industry by the end of the week if you don't shape <laughs> yeah, up, mister. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, the biggest news really. This is going to be done by uh, 2014 this oh, this mule big, and then, big dog. And then after that, um, they're going to start working on the More ones humanoid. with guns. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, this pack mule could have a gun. It's true. You know, nothing can stop anybody from just putting just a machine gun, a gun on to it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Or laser beams. Laser Frickin beams. lasers. Gosh. <laughs> All right. Now it is time for Jesse from Animal Wonders to show us something. And here we are with Jesse from Animal Wonders and uh, her friend Fluffy. <laughs> this is Fluffy. She's the uh, Chilean rosehair tarantula. And she is one of the largest spiders, not one of the largest tarantulas, but tarantulas are one of the largest spiders in the arachnid family, because you can count how many legs she yep. has. Yep, she's an arachnid. <laughs> Fluffy here is fluffy. Yes. And that's one of the things that makes tarantulas, is that they have that very fluffy looking exoskeleton. Yeah, but it's, it, why do you say fluffy looking? It's not <laughs> actually it's not fluffy. it's not actually fur. Like if I touched it, would it be soft? No. Okay. It would not. But I'm not going to. No, it's Because you told me not to do that <laughs> yeah, before we started. <laughs> Can um, I have sure, she'll her? crawl right onto your hand. Oh, you're very light. I expected more weight. Get that last uh, leg. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Another reason oh, that there. she has. Your butt is heavy, though. Yeah. Not, no offense. <laughs> I don't. No. <laughs> That's not really her butt. Right, your abdomen. Mm -hmm. And why is there so much weight in there? Well, that's going to carry all of her goody stuff that's going to make her live. Nutrition. And yes. <laughs> really technical words I, I use like there. Goody stuff. <laughs> goody stuff. No. Yeah. Well, she's also going to carry her egg sac in there right. as well. At the very tip here, she has them tucked up in there. It almost looks like two fingers that are going to go like this. Uh -huh. She pulls them out. They're her spinnerets. And she's going to spin her web with those. Mm -hmm. So you do make a web, but I wouldn't she imagine does. that she crawls on her web. It's a different web than you're thinking. She doesn't yeah. do a big yeah. web like yeah. this. She's going to be a ground-dwelling spider, so she's going to make almost like a hammock mm -hmm. out, of, out of webbing. And then underneath there, she's called a trapdoor spider, it's because underneath that web, she's going to dig a little maybe cave, you could call it, burrow for herself. And that web is going to have little tendrils sticking out a ways, right. so when a little animal comes along and gets stuck on that web, it's going to be like ringing the doorbell. She's going to kind of flip up that web, come running out, and she's going to inject them with her venom. Yum. What kind of uh, damage does a, does a bite from her do? <laughs> it wouldn't feel good, but it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Um, it'll kill uh, or immobilize a uh, cricket. And so what will happen is, let's say she, she bites a small mouse. Okay. So she's going to inject it, and that venom is going to go into that mouse and kind of break down all of the inside to that mouse is going to turn it into like gel goopy stuff and she doesn't have a mouth like us so she doesn't have teeth she doesn't have a jaw she doesn't have a tongue she basically has a hole and it's a vacuum so what she's going to go is going to go grab a hold of that mouse and she's going to suck it up like a slurpee why isn't she doing that to my hand right now she thinks you're the ground oh uh. you're not remember how i told you not to touch her Right. If you came from up above, she'd go, oh, someone's trying to eat me. And then she'd do all of her defensive things mm -hmm. to protect herself. But as long as she thinks I'm the ground, I'm good. You're pretty good. Hopefully. Hi. I have no idea how I'm going to get this animal <laughs> off my hand. Yeah, man, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> this may be my life now. <laughs> Stay there. Blue. Amazing. She's claimed you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, seriously. You want me to, you want <laughs> no, to help? No, seriously, take it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, oh, that was easy. Yeah. 
Well, thank you very much for joining us today on the SciShow Talk Show, Fluffy. Yes. It was a pleasure to meet you. And thank you, Jesse, for bringing her in. Thanks for having yes. me. Thanks for creeping me out. <laughs> <laughs> Man up. <laughs> sure you don't want to hold her? No, I'm pretty sure okay. I don't. <laughs> 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 I probably should. I'm not going to get this chance ever again. All right, let's Do you see. want to? Yeah. All right. You just keep your hand still and she'll crawl onto it. Uh, does it smell fear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that little butt quiver. Yeah. Sorry, abdomen. <laughs> abdomen. I'm not, I'm not sure she's doing the one that's covering. I wonder if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good job. Crawl right up your arm. <laughs> You've done it. You've done it. It's all good. Good work. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of the SciShow Talk Show. Thank you to Peter Winkler for joining us and for doing the graphics. And <laughs> boom. <laughs> and thank you to Jesse from Animal Wonders for joining us as well. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed making it. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>